Good morning everybody. Today we're going to talk about the Nagoya 771 upgrade antenna for the Baofeng radio. And I really wanted to see how good or how bad of an antenna it actually was. Well, how do you tell that? Well, there is a measurement called SWR, and I'm going to keep this as low technical as I can. SWR stands for Standing Wave Ratio, and it's essentially the ratio of how tuned your antenna is to a particular frequency. It has very little to do with the radio itself. It's all about the frequency that you're planning on transmitting on and how well suited the antenna is to that frequency. The problem is as your frequency moves, that ratio can and will change. The antenna has to be cut a specific length and built in a specific way to match a particular frequency. Now, in a perfect world, uh, that number is one. That virtually never happens. Um, it's usually like 1.3, 1.5, something like that. So number a, a one to one match is a perfect scenario. Um, there's debate in the ham world as to what is acceptable. Some people will say three is acceptable. I personally try to keep my stuff under two, um, but I don't think that anyone would really recommend going over a three, okay? So there's sort of your number. A one is perfect. We'll call the three acceptable, and you can do your own research and decide what you think acceptable is. So one to three. Because the Baofeng wool will transmit in such a wide range of frequencies, I wanted to see how well that antenna performed in those frequency ranges. So I've got a little setup rig behind me, and I'm using a device called a Nano VNA. Um, this is a vector network analyzer. It does a bunch of stuff that even I don't understand, like Smith charts and things like that. Um, they're between $50 and $100, depending upon which link you click on on Amazon. This is literally the one that I used in the demo. It's 60 bucks plus some cables, which are nice because you always need SMA and B, uh, SMA extensions and USB extensions. So this one's 60 bucks. There's the Nagoya antenna. You can see I just bought it two weeks ago and it was $20 and it's about 14 inches long. And the ad claims that it is good for both the 144 and the 430 megahertz band, which is the two meter and the 70 centimeter ham bands. Well, most YouTube preppers will tell you to transmit on GMRS, which is very close to, but not exactly the 440 ham band. So, I've got this set up and I'll show you the, my rig. And I ran a test on Nano VNA and let's see how it did. Hey, if you like this content, uh, make sure you hit uh, like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that way you'll know when I post my next video. Thanks, let's get into it. So this is what a band sweep looks like on a Nano VNA and there is some software to let you run it on your computer called Nano VNA Saver. And this actually looks pretty good. Uh, so the ham band, if your ham radio operator is around 440 megahertz, so we're at the far left hand side, and we're at 2.4, which is a little higher than I would prefer, but you know, it's still kind of on the upper, the upper levels of what I call good. But as you get higher up, closer into the FRS GMRS range, which is 460 to 467 approximately, it drops and you get under like 1.6. See, I can even adjust this. So this is FRS, GMRS territory from 460 to 470 thereabouts, and we're under 1.5, 1.4. So that is actually really excellent. I am pleasantly surprised how good it is in the FRS GMRS territory. Uh, if we come back here to 
the ham bands were, you know, under 2.6, which, you know, like I said, is a little higher than I would prefer, but not terrible. So in the upper bands, not bad. But we're not done yet. So if I come over and I go from 140 to 170, which is the VHF and MERS bands, which are license free in the 154 territory, and also can be auto loaded on Chirp uh, onto a Baofeng, the sweep gets really bad. Uh, so handband is 144, so over here on the left, so we got an SWR of over five, which is entirely unacceptable in my opinion. It drops down to you know under two once I get to 158, which is above MERS and up into the weather bands. So MERS is 150 to 155 approximately and we're still above four so you're going to have some issues up uh, if you're trying to use this on MERS or two meters so what kind of issues what happens if your SWR is high well if your SWR is too high one of two things sort of happens number one you don't get out as far you don't have it affects your radiated power so instead of having a five watt radio you might have a one watt radio because some of that power is actually hitting the antenna leaving the radio hitting the antenna and bouncing back into the radio that's bad so number one you're not getting as much power out into the world the second half of that when that power bounces back into the radio you actually can damage your radio so if your SWR is too bad, you're not going to get out, and you could actually end up hurting your radio. Now, Baofeng's $20, but if you're trying to use this in an emergency situation, you end up frying your radio because your SWR is too bad, it is too high, and that's obviously a bad thing. So on the what I'm seeing on, on this uh, setup is I would use this on UHF, but I'd be terrified to use this on VHF with an SWR that high. Really interesting. Um, so for the technical people out there, I'm going to show you the test rig and I will explain how I set this up. This is the Nagoya. And this is a counterpoise wire. So what's a counterpoise wire? Well, an antenna is like any other battery. You have a positive and a negative, right? So in a handheld radio, that negative, that ground, is your hand, is your arm. When you're holding your radio, the thing that goes up in the air is the plus, and your, your arm becomes the negative. So I've seen other videos where they recommend putting a wire on it, you know, it's called a ground plane. Um, they call it a rat tail sometimes. If I take that off, the SWR goes haywire uh, because it expects for you to have, you know, the other half of the signal on your arm. So it's an orange juice container, which is all plastic with the antenna in the top with my little cable that comes out the bottom with my little ground plane wire. So the question is, is the antenna just that bad on VHF? Or did I get a bad one? Or am I doing something completely wrong? It's an excellent question. So that's it for today. Uh, thanks for dropping in. And uh, if you like the content, uh, hit me a subscribe and that notification bell. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.